Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another lecture in Geography 341, Weather and Society. I'm Dr. Zach Hilgendorf, and in this lecture, we're going to be talking about atmospheric stability. In the last four or so lectures, we've been focusing on kind of the adiabatic processes that occur that cause air to rise through that or graphic lifting or frontal lifting. We'll talk about a couple of those just to refresh here in a second. In this video, we're going to look at what's going on in the atmosphere at large. Now, when we talk about atmospheric stability, we're looking at what are the conditions within the atmosphere that can inhibit or aid in vertical motion of an air parcel leading to things like weather. So let's go ahead and dive into it. And uh, this will be the last video for this set group of lectures. And we'll be moving in uh, to the future. We'll be moving into a few other topics. So sit back, enjoy, and let's get rolling. So this is kind of the recap slide from our last lecture. So atmospheric stability is just a condition of the atmosphere that determines whether air will rise spontaneously or not. Lifting mechanisms that can aid in the rising of that air include orographic lifting, frontal lifting, horizontal convergence, and localized or free convection. Now, orographic lifting is just some topographic barrier to flow is forcing air to rise, mountains or hills, things like that. Frontal lifting is where you've got a warm air mass moving over a cold air mass and a warm front pushing through or a cold front pushing in and forcing that warm air up. Horizontal convergence is where you have converging winds at the surface, low pressure system, and diverging winds aloft. So you have converging air, that air rises, cools, diverges at, uh, at altitude. And then localized free convection is where like bodies of water and things like that are heated. That convection causes air to rise, uh, condense, and you have cloud formation. Now, the first three, orographic, frontal, and horizontal convergence, are what we call forced lifting mechanisms. Something is forcing the air to rise in whichever of those three ways versus localized or free convection, which is a form of spontaneous lifting. It is basically driven by uh, local or, you know, local ponds or lakes or things like that. Something that is interacting with the incoming solar radiation, adding moisture to the atmosphere, that thermal energy is rising, and then you have cloud formation. Now, Atmospheric stability determines whether clouds that we see here, these nice, beautiful, billowy clouds, uh, cumulus clouds, will become something like this. Kind of these cumulonimbus anvil clouds. And again, we'll talk about clouds soon. I'm excited to talk about this. I even have an entire book. The National Autobahn Field Guide to North American Weather. Absolutely recommend it. If you want, you can usually pick it up dirt cheap on Amazon. Um, but if you go through it, it's got all these awesome pictures of different phenomena and different weather. Uh, it's not one that I required for the class. This is one that when I took the class, I was uh, told to buy. But um, I was not going to make you buy more books than you had to or use more books than you had to. You can't get this one in the library. This is a self-purchase. So again, I definitely recommend it. I got this used. North American Society Field Guide to North American Weather. Uh, absolutely great. I've used it a ton. And it lets you kind of learn more about weather and weather from an interpretive standpoint. So we'll learn what all these types of clouds are uh, when we get to the cloud lecture, our precipitation lecture. But for now, just know that atmospheric stability is what's driving the formation of these this vertical development that we see here in this bottom left image. So... The actual stability of an air parcel is determined by the orientation of the environmental lapse rate in comparison with either the dry or the moist adiabatic lapse rate. The environmental lapse rate is simply what it says, the rate of change of the temperature of the environment or atmosphere with changing altitude. It's not looking at the parcel, it's looking at the atmosphere at large. It's important to realize that because the atmosphere or environment on average is not rising or sinking, the environmental lapse rate can look much different than the dry or moist or saturated adiabatic lapse rates. In fact, it's those differences that allow us to determine whether a particular part of the atmosphere is stable or unstable. In the figure, we see the dry and moist adiabatic lapse rates. The atmosphere is considered to be unstable 
if a rising parcel cools more slowly than the environmental lapse rate. This causes the parcel to remain warmer and less dense than its surroundings and therefore to continue to accelerate upwards, that vertical motion. The orientation of an unstable environmental lapse rate can be seen in the figure here where I've highlighted it, where you've got temperature on the horizontal altitude on the vertical. So here we're unstable. We're still using our dry adiabatic lapse rate here. You can see that little line there. That's the rate of change. Uh, that dashed line is the rate of change for the, the dry adiabatic lapse rate. But we can see here that if we fall into the absolutely unstable, we're still getting vertical motion. We're still getting uh, cooling air and we have an inherently unstable atmosphere. The atmosphere is considered to be stable if a rising parcel cools faster than the environmental lapse rate. This causes the air parcel to be cooler and more dense than its surroundings and lose its buoyancy. So if it's warmer than its surrounding, then it's gonna to continue to rise. But if it's cooler than its surroundings, it's gonna lose that buoyancy. And if it loses that buoyancy, it's gonna stagnate. Vertical motion tends to be restricted when the atmosphere is in stable equilibrium. The orientation of stable environmental lapse rate can be seen uh, circled or squared off here. Now, that middle one there, conditional instability, says that an unsaturated parcel will be cooler than the environment and will sink back down to the ground, while a saturated parcel will be warmer than the environment and will continue to ascend. So it's kind of that middle ground there. Um, so if we fall into uh, that realm of conditional instability and we are not saturated, that air will descend. If we are saturated, it will continue to rise. So let's look at what that actually looks like here in, in a graphic similar to what we saw in some of the past videos. So looking at our stability classes here, we've got our little position on the surface by that ball that we see down there pretending that is 30 degrees. That's our air parcel is 30 degrees. Dew point is gonna be 22 degrees Celsius here. Our environmental lapse rate is equal to 0.4 degrees Celsius for every 100 meters. So at the surface, it's 30. At 1,000 meters, it's 26. 2,000 meters, it's 22 degrees Celsius. 3,000 meters, it's 18 degrees Celsius, so we're cooling at a consistent environmental lapse rate or ELR as opposed to our air parcel which is cooling at the dry adiabatic lapse rate for the present as well as our dew point and it's also changing at the dew point lapse rate so by the time we get to a thousand meters we're down to 20 degrees celsius our dew point is cooling at that 0.2 degrees celsius for every 100 meters or two degrees celsius for every thousand meters so we're at 20 degrees Celsius. So here at a thousand meters, we have hit our lifting condensation level. That's the base of our cloud bank right there, right? Our saturated adiabatic lapse rate or moist adiabatic lapse rate, again, kind of used interchangeably, then is going to be for this example, 0.5 degrees Celsius for every 100 meters. So notice we are warming, our air parcel is warming uh, as it's rising. So by the time we get here, or sorry, not warming, it's cooling as it's rising. So by the time we get uh, another thousand meters, we're down to 15 degrees Celsius. By the time we get up to uh, 3000 meters, we're at uh, 10 degrees Celsius, right? Just that constant rate. This is a condition where our atmosphere is absolutely stable. We can look in this next version, same setup, 22 degrees Celsius for our dew point, 30 degrees Celsius for our air parcel, 30 degrees is our environmental lapse rate. Here, our environmental lapse rate is gonna be 1.2 degrees Celsius for every 100 meters instead of 0.4. By the time we get up to altitude, 3000 meters, right? Negative six degrees Celsius is our, is our, is our temperature. Our parcel is changing at that same rate as it was in the previous example, right? There's our LCL. Here we are. By the time we get up, we're at 10 degrees Celsius. This is absolutely unstable. Our air parcel is warmer almost immediately than the surrounding environment, and it is continuing to rise. 
because of that buoyancy in the atmosphere. And then we get to our final one here, same setup. Our venom elapse rate is 0.7 degrees Celsius for every 100 meters. That means by the time we get to altitude at 3000 meters, we're at 7.5 degrees Celsius. Here, as we rise, we're still cooler than the environmental temperature. That's our lap or lifting condensation level again. By the time we get here, we are equal to our uh, atmosphere or our environmental temperature. By the time we get up, we are uh, at 10 degrees Celsius. So in this example, this is conditionally unstable, but our parcel is saturated and it continues to rise. This point here is what we call the level of free convection. So then we ask, what determines the stability class of air within the atmosphere? Well, it's mainly driven by that environmental lapse rate and the saturated adiabatic lapse rate. So if the saturated adiabatic lapse rate exceeds the environmental lapse rate, we have absolutely stable air. We could also say that as the environmental lapse rate, uh, as the dry adiabatic lapse rate exceeds the environmental lapse rate, we can have that uh, absolutely stable air. If the environmental lapse rate exceeds the dry adiabatic lapse rate or the saturated adiabatic lapse rate, we have that absolutely unstable. Here, it's conditional. If, it, uh, if for the conditionally unstable, hence the word conditional air, conditionally unstable, if your dry adiabatic lapse rate is exceeding your environmental lapse rate, you can have conditionally unstable air. But if your saturated adiabatic lapse rate is lower than your environmental lapse rate, then you have, you're still within that conditionally unstable. That's that if or is what makes it the conditionally unstable uh, class rather than, pardon me, uh, absolutely unstable or absolutely stable. So what determines how high unstable air is going to rise? Well, we look here at our example. We've kind of filled in a couple of the gaps here. This is kind of that middle one, right? Where we were looking at conditionally or at uh, absolutely unstable air. So our environmental lapse rate is 1.2 degrees Celsius for every 100 meters. But as it rises, that environmental lapse rate can change. So it is different because we're talking about environmental averages here. As we rise, that environmental lapse rate can change as well. So here, if the environmental lapse rate was to change to 0.3 degrees Celsius for every 100 meters, rather than 1.2 degrees Celsius for every 100 meters, we'd hit that free convection or layer at that 15 degrees Celsius. That's our equilibrium level right there, right? And then by the time we get up, we're a little bit cooler than our surrounding air. We have kind of buoyancy still. And that's what drives kind of the base and tops of these clouds here. It's that equilibrium level. So our lifting condensation level is still right there. But in this example, these are the types of clouds you could expect. Or if we change that up just a little bit, uh, if it's our environmental lapse rate changes to negative 0.3 degrees Celsius, so we're warming, the environmental temperature is warming negative 0.3 degrees uh, for every 100 meters. So there we go from 830 to 18 to 21 to 24. Our equilibrium level is much lower. You get clouds that look like this. You can see above these kind of cumulus clouds that we see distributed throughout. So the environmental lapse rate largely determines the stability class of the atmosphere, as we've kind of said. But what affects the environmental lapse rate? Well, surface heating and cooling is one of them. The expansion of air parcels at the surface from heating uh, is one of the primary things that we, we see affecting atmospheric stability. So here's, we're looking at a vertical temperature profile. And now in this version or this example here, our environmental lapse rate is 0.65 degrees Celsius for every 100 meters. We see that sketched out here. So how does this change diurnally, for example, through the day? Well, maybe this is at sunrise. 
Now, at noon, by the time we have uh, incoming solar radiation or insulation hitting the surface, warming the surface, our environmental lapse rate at noon might be 5.65 degrees Celsius with every 100 meters at the surface. There's a much steeper gradient before it planes off again. By mid-afternoon, that could be 4.94 degrees Celsius for every 100 meters and 0.65 degrees Celsius for every 100 meters at altitude. And it's this type of difference, this type of change, that is leading to kind of the development of clouds in the mid-afternoon. A lot of times you see clouds forming as the day progresses. That's what's causing it is this, this uh, change in the environmental lapse rate relative to uh, the air parcels moving throughout the atmosphere. Here's another example. Here we are at sunset. 0.65 degrees Celsius for every 100 meters. But as we go to midnight, we see a much steeper version. So we're losing air, or we're, sorry, we're, we're giving off uh, that much more air or temperature as we're moving through the night. So here the environmental lapse rate is negative 7.35 degrees Celsius with every 100 meters. So we're seeing a warming there briefly before we go back to that cooling of uh, 0 0.65 degrees Celsius for every 100 meters. And then at sunrise, we can see this is what the scenario could be. So here you can see, that's why as this little, we'll draw it out here. So as this air is rising from here, you're seeing it kind of cap off. This is our equilibrium level right here because of stability within the atmosphere. So that air can't really rise too much further than it is in this example uh, because it's being trapped by this stability within our atmosphere. Warm or cold air advection can also affect the environmental lapse rate. Looking at warm or less dense air, or colder or denser air. Synoptic scale subsidence uh, can also affect the environmental lapse rate. Subsidence just refers to an extensive sinking motion of air, most frequently occurring in a uh, phenomenon called anticyclones. Subsiding air is warmed by compression and becomes more stable. We can see that here. This can lead to, subs to a subsidence inversion, which is caused by sinking air, generally associated with these high pressure systems. You can see there our temperature might equal negative uh, 39 degrees Celsius. At 9,000, it might be negative 45 degrees Celsius. We might have an inversion around maybe 600, degree, 600 meters to 900 meters. So this distance of, you know, for example, 7,400 meters in this example, here, our temperature might be 35 degrees and then 36 degrees. So we've got this almost inversion here. It's what we call a subsidence inversion. So that's all for this one. We're briefly just talked about uh, lifting air parcels, frontal systems, and atmospheric stability uh, regarding kind of how these impact uh, environmental lapse rates. So that's going to be all for the kind of talk about how parcels are moving about the atmosphere. We're going to dive into what that looks like from more of a graphical representation in one of our uh, interpreting weather and reading weather lectures here in the very near future. Um, so stay tuned for that. But for now, that's going to wrap it up for this group of lectures, and we will see you in the next one. Thanks. Have a great day.